Paul Sweeney. Thank you, Mr. Robertson. It's a pleasure to serve under your chairmanship. And, uh, I congratulate the Honourable Member for Paisley and Renfrewshire North for securing this debate and for making a very powerful speech to introduce to the very complex but very dramatic and distressing uh, situation of Green Deal mis-selling and in particular the impact of the company Helms. Um, when I was elected in 2017 last year, um, it was a neat community that I'd grown up and lived in, in my whole life and the community of Ballornock in particular is one that is probably similar to Linwood in my own members constituency for Renfrewshire uh, North. In many ways it was that overspill estate created after the Second World War. It was built um, a time of great optimism uh, in the Glasgow city region uh, where people are moving out of overcrowded slum tenements in the inner cities of Glasgow and into what they saw as new build housing with indoor toilets and uh, front and back gardens. It was a community that was largely born of the baby boomer generation. Uh, they moved in and they lived there their whole lives and many of them benefited uh, as they saw from the buying their own council houses in the 1980s and 1990s and many wanted to make improvements to those houses um, as they reached retirement. Um, so we have a community that's been built out of great optimism and great uh, aspiration for the future. However, uh, five years ago when the Green Deal was launched to great fanfare by the Tory government, the promise of a win-win situation for homeowners, lower energy bills and the chance to do their bit for the environment seemed like a great idea uh, and those who sought to exploit that scheme, targeted communities, in particular those, as I mentioned, where there was a large population of baby boomers and there were self-contained uh, self housing units, there were back in front gardens, they weren't flat to the accommodation and they honed in on those communities in a very, very cynical way. Uh, and if it sounds too good to be true, it's because for some in those communities it turned out to be exactly that. Dozens of my constituents in Glasgow signed up to install Green Deal financed improvements to their homes, such as solar panels and insulated cladding, but for them it's proven to be one of the worst decisions they have ever made. Instead of realising the government's vision of a flagship programme to reduce fuel poverty and to improve energy efficiency, a complete failure to properly regulate the scheme allowed it to be ruthlessly exploited by gangsters and other rogue traders who have systematically preyed on trusting people who thought as the scheme was approved and accredited by the government, then they could trust its credentials and sign up. In 2015, one of my constituents, Christine McBain, handed over her life savings to a canvas line based Green Deal provider called Home Energy and Lifestyle Management Systems, otherwise known as HELMS, to put external wall insulation on our Swedish timber framed house in Ballonock. And the Swedish timber framed houses are a common feature of Ballonock because the overspill in Glasgow was so problematic after the end of the Second World War that they actually imported timber kit houses from Scandinavia to build houses, such was the pressure on housing at that time. But obviously, um, nearly a, a, over half a century later, they might not be the most energy efficient of houses. So this seemed like a plausible idea for them to sign up and find a way to actually make their houses better. It turned out to be, as I said, the worst decision they've ever made. And another constituent, 86-year-old Mary, has been left with £17,000 worth of debt after being duped by Helms with no sign of any redress. That is an 86-year-old woman with her life savings handed over to Helms. And I have to tell you, it's the most appalling experience as an MP to see people coming in who are meant to be enjoying their retirement, feeling safe in their life's work and life savings, being stripped of any sense of security and in absolute distress about what they're having to deal with. And will sadly, in many cases, if this isn't dealt with in a massive urgency, have to deal with this for the remainder of their lives. That is a shameful indictment on this government's failure to regulate the policy. And Christine and Mary are among many local residents in my constituency who have been left totally in limbo by Helms. The company has carried out similar works in over 160 properties in my constituency without obtaining the necessary building warrants cynically preying on those local residents with promises of free solar panels and cavity wall insulation that would save them thousands of pounds. Normally, this matter would be easily remedied with a retrospective application for a building warrant from Glasgow City Council. However, because building standards were not adhered to by Helms, no backdated planning permission could be granted without costly surveys being done. In addition, the statutory fee for a building warrant will be tripled where works have already been completed. Residents simply do not have the financial resources to fund this and in the absence of building warrants the houses are now uninsurable and unsellable. So residents feel that they are now effectively imprisoned in their own homes, many of them in the last, uh, latter years of their lives. That is shameful. 
I am currently seeking agreement from Glasgow City Council to waive the multiplier fee for the retrospective warrant and to cover the costs of the surveys needed to apply those building warrants and get that work carried out. And I would ask if the Minister would write to Glasgow City Council's Chief Executive to make a similar call. Earlier this year, I also met with representatives of the Green... Oh, happy to give away on that point. Does the Honourable Gentleman not accept that the, the underlying fault here lies with the UK Government scheme and having the UK Government lobbying Glasgow City Council to pick up these costs as opposed to offering to fund them seems uh, the wrong way round to me. It's a very fair point. I think in the first instance I would urge the Minister to show some leadership overall as a responsibility for this issue. I would urge for in the first instance to make contact with Glasgow City Council's Chief Executive and offer a dialogue. And I would certainly be receptive to the Honourable Lady's proposal about the government offering to finance that as a way of me breaking this impasse and getting it dealt with. It needs a whole government approach from a city level, a Scottish level and a UK level. And I think that would be the most proactive way of dealing with it. But ultimately, the responsibility lies with the department which introduced the scheme. And they should therefore show moral leadership and indeed financial leadership in addressing it. Um, earlier this year, I also met with representatives of the Green Deal Finance Company to raise the concerns of my constituents. In the last year alone, the Green Deal Finance Company has upheld 169 complaints against Helms. This compares to the 14 complaints against all other contractors upheld since 2013. So clearly there's a massive outlier in respect of one contractor. That, um, some 154 cases against Helms remain under consideration by the Green Deal Finance Company. However, this piecemeal approach to handling complaints has put the onus on the victims. The sheer number of complaints upheld against Helms suggests that this was a systemic failure of regulation by the government and that a proactive approach is now needed to tackle this huge failure of the Green Deal scheme. And it is the responsibility of the Minister and the Green Deal Finance Company to lead that. It can't be the responsibility of local residents who are already distressed, uh, disorientated and totally um, at the wit's end about dealing with this. They cannot be put under further stress and having to take up this huge effort to, to right this wrong. Well, Happy to give way. Give way. Now, is the member aware, as I'm sure he is from many of his own constituents, that people who chose to pay over several, several years through their electricity bills are not able to withhold payment, a common and acceptable consumer rights practice, if they believe they've been missold? Because if the power company does not receive the funds, they will then accrue debt as a result and they are unable to um, prevent the Green Deal payment from being removed from their energy bills, therefore they are still accruing more debt in the process. I agree with the Honourable Lady's point completely. It is uh, one of the most insidious aspects of the Green Deal scheme that it locks people into a structural system that the, the loan is tied to the house. So it is actually the property itself that imprisons the resident and that is the most appalling aspect of uh, how this has been manipulated by Helms and other nefarious practitioners of the Green Deal scheme. Uh, indeed, Helms made more than six million use and sales calls um, and were fined, as um, one member uh, mentioned in his introductory remarks, £200,000 by the Information Commissioner's Office. And the Department for Energy and Climate Change also fined the firm an £10,500. But conveniently, the company then was put into liquidation by its owners and they walked away after paying just £10,000 of the fines owned, uh, owed. And the company itself, as was mentioned, is owned by the multimillionaire Robert Skillen, who continues to live a highly privileged lifestyle at the expense of thousands of people, including my constituents, who he ripped off, leaving a trail of misery and chaos in his wake. He fled abroad and continues to profit from his fraudulent business practices. And if he has any honour, he would return to the UK and face the accusations against him. And indeed, he should be facing prosecution for fraud. Dozens of other homeowners in Glasgow... Happy to get away. Member for giving way. Um, just to make him aware and uh, our colleagues in the, ch the chamber today um, that Mr Skillen has returned to the country um, on, I think, a number of occasions. On one occasion, um, turned up to the Green Deal Finance Company to ask him for the details of all the customers who have contacted Green Deal Finance Company so that he could contact them directly, such as the shame um, or shamelessness um, of this man. That's quite an appalling. Uh, realisation this chap has such a shameless attitude that he doesn't accept the harm he's caused to thousands of people who can't sleep at night. I hope he can uh, realise the impact that he's had on those people. But I think it's also time that the Minister and the Green Deal Finance Company took formal steps to censure and in fact to blacklist this guy to stop him continuing to exploit uh, vulnerable people. Um, 
I think, as the Honourable Lady had mentioned, dozens of other homeowners in Glasgow North East are still literally paying the price of the Green Deal's failure through the finance deals they were conned into to get the work done. Uh, a home is somewhere we should be, all be able to consider as a sanctuary and a place of safety. However, many are so depressed by the Green Deal trap they find themselves in that they cannot bear to live in their own homes anymore, the very source of their turmoil. Most people would consider a government-backed scheme like this to carry a copper-bottom guarantee but for many of my constituents, the feeling is one of total betrayal by the authorities they trusted. The Tory government created this environment for rogue traders to pull a fast one. And I believe that the government and the Green Deal finance company must now do everything they can to find a remedy for those adversely affected. They must contact all 4,226 Helms loan recipients to make them aware of what they can do to find redress if they find themselves uh, financially detrimented by the scheme. And they must also consider a compensation scheme for those who have been affected by mis-selling by Helms. That is why I joined the all-party parliamentary group on Green Deal mis-selling after my election, along with my honourable friends, the member for Rutherglen and Hamilton West and Cope Bridge, Christen and Bells Hill, and why I presented a petition to Parliament earlier this year urging the House of Commons to ensure that this government compensates and protects people who have found, found themselves suffering a detriment because of the Green Deal scheme. In the interests of fairness and justice, the government should now take steps to ensure this can never happen again in the future.